Greetings fellow Egyptomaniacs and today we're going to be making salt dough scarab beetles so you're going to need a few ingredients to get started and there's a list coming up just now that will show you all of the things that you need to get ready before we start this job. So you're going to need two cups of plain flour, one cup of cheap salt, one cup of cold water, some PVA glue, some blue and green paint and a paintbrush and some sort of pointy thing, ideally a cocktail stick. We're going to need to use the ovens so ask for help if you need help with that. You've probably seen these sort of little scarab beetles. They're all over ancient Egyptian museums and they were worn by ancient Egyptian people to protect their heart in the afterlife during the weighing of the heart ceremony. So on the reverse there was often a magical spell written to protect their heart and to stop the heart from revealing any sins that it may have committed during its life. The hieroglyphic symbol of the scarab beetle is a triliteral sign and it means kepri, Kepri was a very important ancient Egyptian god, an aspect of Ra, and he was believed to help the sun rise every morning, so he's very important to the ancient Egyptians. Okay, so if you're ready to start, you need two cups of plain white flour and one cup of cheap table salt, and I've put those into this bowl here and I'm going to stir them up. Make sure they're really nice and mixed in. And then take your cup of cold water and slowly start to put that into the mixture as well. As you can see that is all nice and mixed in now. So give it a knead and then I'm going to go and fetch a board and put it on a board and then we can start shaping our scarab beetles. Now we have a nice smooth dough. So when you've um, finished making your dough, take a little piece and create a kind of egg shape and flatten it slightly so it's like this. And then it's probably easier if you place it on the baking tray then because it squidges and moves around quite a lot. So, put my baking tray here and then flatten it down on there a touch and just shape it the way that you want it to be. And then using your little stick, make whatever shapes you want, patterns you want, onto the surface of the scarab beetle. And you can just make up your own designs or you can copy one of the scarab beetles that I showed you earlier in the video or maybe a book that you've already got and then sometimes they have these little bits pointing out the top here so I'm going to do that on my one. So I've made a few different designs here as you can see and we're going to let those dry for a bit before we put them in the oven. For our mock faience glaze we're going to use a little bit of PVA glue so I have that here in this pot and then we're going to use a tiny amount of green paint like literally just a little drip and a tiny amount of blue paint as well to create that lovely blue green faience look that you see on a lot of ancient Egyptian artifacts and we're going to mix that all up to get that really nice colour. So here's my little pot of faience for use later. And true Egyptian faience is actually powdered quartz, heated, and this creates a glaze and it gives it that beautiful blue-green tint that you see on so many artefacts. This glaze was used on most of the scarab amulets and also on Ushabti dolls, the little slave dolls that pharaohs had buried with them in tombs to do all their jobs in the afterlife. So this is handy to have around the house, I think, a bit of faience glaze. 
So I've cooked our little scarab beetles. Unfortunately, I burned them a little bit, so uh, be a little bit more careful when you cook them in your oven. Anyway, I think this would be all right. It might actually make them look a little bit more old and more authentic. So anyway, they're pretty hard now. I cooked them for about uh, 30 minutes. So I'm gonna paint them now with our faience and let's have a look. The best way to get them covered in the glaze is to pour the glaze onto them because when you use a paintbrush the glue kind of clumps together so this is the best way to just drip it on and then brush the edges around and then let the glaze sink into the cracks and then we're going to leave that to dry And here's one I made earlier. This is what they look like when you're finished. And I think you'll agree, pretty much identical to an ancient Egyptian scarab amulet. Thank you so much for watching this video and joining me on Egyptomaniacs today. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll do some more videos, so there should be one every week or so, on different types of arts and crafts activities inspired by ancient Egypt. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.